Do you recommend like putting it on and like doing those swoopy things? You can do the swoopy things. <laughs> this is South Coast Plaza. As one of the largest and most luxurious shopping centers in America, you won't be able to find a food court here. As I was wandering around, I came across a restaurant called Tableau, which features a lot of Asian fusion items on their menu, exactly what I cook. So that basically qualifies me to snoop around in here, right? Just kind of poking around to see what I can do back here. Hi. Hi! What are you doing back here? <laughs> I'm looking for the sous chef Holly. That's me. Luckily, Chef Holly, the sous chef, let me stay and hang out with her to see what her job is like. And if I'm a good learner, I may even be able to create my own dish. Oh yeah, that's coffee. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> Hi, I'm Holly. I'm the sous chef here at Tableau Kitchen and Bar. As a sous chef here at Tableau, I make sure to manage the kitchen, help make sure that everything runs smoothly, functions properly. I assist our executive and our CDC. I do a lot of the orderings. I do training for whenever we have new staff coming in and just also being a part of creating new menu items here as well. Usually it's the CDC's job to create like all the menu items but they really encourage everyone here to like step in and like represent themselves because it's a very collaborative kitchen where the menu item isn't just one person but it's the whole team. All right so today Zong I'm gonna walk you through what my day looks like here at Tableau so let's go. All right. So Zong right here we have like our dish pit all of our servers bring glassware right here um, over here, we also have our sheeter as well. We make pasta here, we make croissant doughs here. Over here, we have our main line. We have two of our cooks here today. We have Jakey down over there. We have Vanny over here. Break it down into sections and stations. So we have like our brunch and flat top right down at the end. And then over here, we kind of have like our all day menu. Down over here, we have kind of like our pastry section. So this is all pastry. We have our freezers over here. So pretty much this is like where all of the desserts come out, our yogurts, parfaits, our acai bowls. This is where they make all of our drinks, our espressos, our lattes, our coffees. Down over here we have Daniel. He's one of our pastry cooks. He's setting up our pastry display right now. Right now he's doing a ube croissant and then our almond croissants. These are our two like most popular flavor croissants that we have. Right this way we do have our walk-in. We kind of have a lot of things in here right now but every walk-in is always super full. Oh wow this is a pretty big walk-in. It is pretty big but sometimes it seems like it's not big enough. <laughs> so any prep that we need to do to cool down like whether it's cooking rice, risotto, chicken wings or any of our sauces we'll use this rack and then this rack over here we have all of our pastries like our cookies, our brownies. All right so here is our dry storage. We also have like our liquor cabinet over here, all of our dry goods right over here. We have all all of our liquids on this side as well, our canned goods, more pastry items. Let's go ahead and get you an apron. Oh, And then awesome. you can get ready with me. Also, whenever you are walking around in the kitchen, just make sure you're verbal about it. Every time you walk around a corner, just say corner. If you're going behind someone, just say behind. Okay. Just make yourself known. Yeah, no hot plate <laughs> to people. Well, usually when service is ready, I kind of just keep up on prep. Okay. It was cool to see behind the scenes everyone doing their thing, shaving the vegetables, cutting the fruits. So right here, I already have these strawberries washed and cleaned. We do cut these into little rounds. Pretty much just make sure your fingers are always tucked in. So if I could have you start cutting those, okay. and then you can go ahead and throw them in one of these pans. Okay, cool. I got my first assignment, which was to chop up these strawberries, and it went okay. I'm not unfamiliar with chopping strawberries, but it was a little bit stressful because I felt like I had to make every slice so perfect. But once I got the hang of it, we started just flowing. And it was pretty therapeutic for me because I actually love prepping and chopping things. So Chef Holly, what's one of your favorite things to make here for brunch? Would probably be the jasmine french toast. Pretty much our take on like a regular french toast, but putting our spin on it with uh, Asian flavors. Do you think we can make that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so if you want, you can go ahead and throw some of those strawberries that you cut already okay. in there. So this is going to be our candied lemons. Right over here is the 
jasmine whipped cream. This right here is also our brulee batter, a French toast batter. Okay. But we have, it's a little bit different because it has a little bit more sugar in there. It has eggs, it has milk, it has butter and flour. Mm -hmm. And then once we like dip it in there and then put it on the flat top, you'll kind of see like the lace effect that it gives. Okay. Strawberry and that. And okay. then we also have our own glaze sauce right here. A little bit of a looser cream and we steep it with our jasmine. So here we have our brioche bread. We're gonna go ahead and grab two pieces. Now Chef Holly is actually letting me make my own jasmine French toast. I've made a ton of French toast before, but I don't know why making it in a restaurant kitchen like this is so nerve wracking. Then I go ahead and bring that over here. I just put some butter down and then go ahead and put it down. The other thing that you wanna do is like kind of get some of the batter in the spoon as well so oh. that way it can like ooze out on the edges there you go perfect i have my plate set up and then i'll go ahead and start swirling. doing the swirls for the plate this is where you have your kind of artistic freedom <laughs> yeah you can like do any design you want the tip to getting like a really nice like drizzle is kind of using the tip of your spoon because uh -huh. i know a lot of people kind of like want it want to like grab this uh -huh. but then if you kind of do this you're gonna get like big globs yeah so what I like to do is like kind of like swirling it in my deli mm -hmm. and then you kind of have like that that face yeah. dream got it but you can practice with it go for it free food styling tip I love that <laughs> mine becomes kind of dotty is that okay so it becomes dotty because you're kind of moving a little bit slower so when you want like longer smoother strokes you kind of want a little bit more of the sauce in there and kind of moving quicker kind of like you're brushing stuff. yeah yeah so when you move a little bit faster you kind of get more of a smoother stroke do you recommend like putting it on and like doing those swoopy things you can do the swoopy things <laughs> <laughs> my artistic impression today what i'm looking for when i before i flip it is i just want to make sure that all the edges are kind of like brown and they're getting nice and crispy and then you kind of see the bubbles yeah that means like the heat is going through the batter and it's cooking all the way down kind of like how you want pancakes where you have like air bubbles you can always take like a peek too mm -hmm. if you don't know and then kind of just like go all the way under and then flip it over. i like the lacing of it yeah so then just kind of like go under so that way it's not sticking and then just do a quick yep there you go i'll do like a nice big dollop and then i like to go ahead and kind of like cut it up here already and then now you can go ahead and start plating it with the strawberries get a nice amount on mm -hmm. right in the center Oops. if it falls off that's fine we could always add more strawberries too what this is, is our candied lemons so we pretty much take the rind off of lemons we blanch it in water kind of just to get rid of its bitterness and to cook it down as well then we cook it in a simple syrup to give it the candied lemon taste mm -hmm. strawberry sauce oh we can cover that <laughs> so i like to do little dollops and then holding it at the edge mm -hmm. with um, kind of like getting a nice grip on it mm -hmm. gives you a little bit more control and then you kind of get rounds. Oh. There you go. Mm -hmm. And you get nice plump oh, rounds. Oh man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Looks good. <laughs> Jasmine whipped cream, if you wanted to do a nice dollop of that, right, right in the center. In the center. Mm -hmm. oh, I used to think I was good at food styling. <laughs> and then go ahead and grab your dehydrated strawberries okay. and then we're just gonna crush it in our fingers and then just sprinkle it right on top and that'll be your finishing touch and your very Amazing. first jasmine milk tea french toast my very first one <laughs> Now that you've made our version of a French toast, did you want to add a little spin on your own? I would love to. Okay. <laughs> so I was thinking you guys have your spin on like jasmine milk tea mm -hmm. boba. So I am a Vietnamese and I love infusing breakfast foods like granola with Vietnamese coffee. So I was nice. thinking, how do you feel about a Vietnamese coffee French toast? That sounds really good. We could definitely do that. We could do like coffee infused in the pastry cream because kind of like how we infuse our tea leaves in the mm -hmm. pastry cream. All right, let's do this. So this one's going to be a deeper, richer flavor since it's going to be our espresso beans. Mm -hmm. And then this one is going to just be like our ground coffee beans. Okay. I was thinking maybe the espresso the beans. The espresso one since yeah. Vietnamese coffee yeah. is so strong. Yeah. <laughs> Here's our condensed milk. It'll go as a sauce on the plate. Yeah, we yeah. can do that. Okay. 
So Vietnamese coffee is something that my dad had every single morning growing up. It was part of our daily lives and routine, and I always had a sip of his here and there. Okay, so I got you espresso as well that we could fold into our cream. Okay. And then we could use this as like our sprinkle and to fold into our whipped cream as well. Perfect. Coming down right behind. Bye. This is such a cute blue KitchenAid mixer. So for the topping, I saw you guys had this like Graham streusel out there, so I think it would add a nice crunch to it the really French would. toast. But I thought that infusing their French toast with Vietnamese coffee just made so much sense. And in celebrating AAPI month in May, we'll actually be featuring this dish for the whole month at Tableau. So I'll give you guys more details at the end, but this dish is really special to me. And I really love the collaborative process working with a real chef to see how how a real chef would infuse the flavors into each component. Yeah, it's not too sweet at all. I almost feel like it could use more coffee. More coffee? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, that's coffee. Yeah, that's really <laughs> good. My signature plate. Recipe developing and food styling is probably my favorite part of my job, aside from filming the videos, of course. Maybe someday I'll get to design a menu for you guys and have my own restaurant. Who knows? It'll look better when Chef Holly makes your dish. Anyways, it's learning and failing as a creator and a human being that makes life interesting. You learn from your mistakes and you make it better, like flipping this French toast and then completely destroying it. So I'm gonna have you do this to make it look beautiful because you guys saw my work So pretty earlier. much what I like to do, I just kind of like shape it how I want it. Oh, that's how you do it, yeah. And then I just do a nice big doll. Beautiful. Right top. So here is our Vietnamese coffee French toast. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. That is very coffee. Mm -hmm. It actually goes pretty well with the strawberries. Love the streusel crunch in there. And I almost feel like I should have used that for more on top of the whipped cream than to the get coffee. More. Yeah, to get more crunch. And the condensed milk is like very delicate. So what do you think, Chef? Not bad. No? Mm -hmm. If you guys want to try my Vietnamese coffee French toast, this dish will be featured at Tableau Restaurant at South Coast Plaza for the entire month of May. So definitely come visit Tableau Restaurant. Chef Holly will be creating this for you. Well, thank you, Chef Holly, for letting me spend the day with you. It was really fun. And before you guys leave, I wanted to let you know in celebration of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, I will be joining South Coast Plaza on May 18th for a food fest that recognizes accomplishments and contributions contributions of talented Asian American chefs and they'll be highlighting their distinctive specialties offered from each restaurant. Tickets are available in the link in the description box below, but I am giving away 10 tickets to my viewers and I will be there in person to sign 10 cookbooks for the winners. And if you guys wanted to invite your friends, tickets are priced at $40, which will include an extra tasting for Honeysuckle viewers below. So enter the code Honeysuckle. So I finished my shift and that was actually really fun. The one thing that I always thought was that, you know how they say like behind the line is like always really hot? Surprisingly, this one had like air conditioning or it just felt like a lot cooler than I thought it would. So that was kind of refreshing, but the food here was incredible. I can't wait to come back to try other stuff. Um, and you guys should come too. So come check out my dish for the full month of May. Go to Food Fest, order the tickets. I'll have everything linked in the description box below. Watch the next video and I will see you guys next time. Bye.